Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Case Study. I'm your host, Greg Mercer, and joined by my co-host, Rolando Galliana. What's up? Hey, what's happening, Greg? How's it going, Freedom Builders? I'm doing fantastic. I'm excited for this episode, episode number nine, where we're gonna be teaching you guys how to go about doing keyword research and creating your listing in Amazon Seller Central. Before we dive into the content though, Rolando, give us a quick update on where our product's at. Well, I got a little bit of bad news. Oh, uh, unfortunately, no. there's going to be a delay because of the Chinese national holiday that runs from October 1st through October 7th. So our supplier informed me that we more than likely will not be able to go into mass production until until after that. So that's the, uh, the bad news. The good news is that we do go into mass production pretty soon here. I'm excited to finally get this under production soon, Rolando. That's too bad that we hit some delays. However, at the end of the day, that is kind of just part of business, right? This type of thing seems to happen often. But let's not focus on that too much and let's dive into how we go about doing good keyword research on Amazon. Awesome, let's dive right in. So the reason we've joined together keyword research with creating your listing is doing your keyword research and figuring out what people are searching for and what words you want to rank for is in a very important part of creating your listing. When you hear people talk about doing keyword research and why you need to do keyword research, it really comes down to two areas. The first area is so you can figure out what words people are searching for so you can craft the perfect listing and so that you can be indexed for the keyword that people are searching for. The second reason is so you can figure out what keywords you wanna bid on when you're talking about doing Amazon sponsor products or Amazon PPC. Down the road, we're gonna do a whole episode dedicated to Amazon PPC and that particular platform. But for the purpose of this episode, we're mainly gonna focus on that first reason, which is figuring out what keywords people are searching for so you can craft the perfect listing. And as always, uh, head on over to junglescout.com forward slash MDCS 4-9, where you can uh, get a, a written version of this video. So there's really two different ways you can go about doing Amazon keyword research. One is to use one of the free tools out there. And if you Google search free keyword research tool, you'll come across a number of them. However, the problem we found with most of these is they're not specific for Amazon. These are just general keyword research tools, which are fine, they'll help you. However, they're not really the best way to go about doing it. Google also has a free tool called the Google Keyword Planner, which feel free to use and try out. However, lately they've limited it so that if you don't have an AdWords account, you can only do a few number of searches. And again, this is for the Google platform, not the Amazon platform, which of course the keyword search behavior is gonna be different on these different types of platforms. Probably my favorite free way to go about researching keywords is using the Amazon autocomplete. And I'll show you how to do that now. So when you're on Amazon, if you search for something like keyboard tray, you'll see there's a list of results that Amazon's giving us here. And they have an algorithm in the background that's trying to estimate what you want to search for. So as a result, we can assume that these are real customer searches. And these are other types of things that people would be searching for when they type in keyboard tray. Now, the downside to this is that they're only gonna give us keyword suggestions that have words after keyboard tray. So all the keyword suggestions are gonna start with keyboard tray. So it is probably my favorite free way to go about it. However, it's still gonna be a little bit limited on what kind of search results you get. All right, Greg, enough telling us about all the free tools out there. Let's, let's just cut to the chase and get to the best of the best. <laughs> all right. So Jungle Scout does have a paid tool. And if you're a member of the Jungle Scout web app, you actually don't have to pay any additional for this. So inside of the Jungle Scout web app is a tool called Keyword Scout that is commonly referred as the best keyword research tool on the market. And that's for a few reasons that I'll tell you about. The first one is Jungle Scout gets real search volume from Amazon. So unlike other tools that drive their data from something like Google search volumes or Bing search volumes, this is actually from real search data on Amazon. So that's the number one reason that it is a fantastic tool to use. My second favorite reason, even though there's quite a long list, is the results that Keyword Scout gives you from your seed keyword 
are highly relevant and don't necessarily include the seed keyword. Let me give you an example to better understand what I'm trying to explain here. I'm gonna search for keyboard tray and the results that I'm given here don't necessarily include the term keyboard tray. Now remember on Amazon, when I typed in keyboard tray, it only gave me that word keyboard tray with other words after it and other keyword research tools on the market give similar results. In comparison, Jungle Scout's Keyword Scout gives you words that Amazon customers search for then end up purchasing a keyboard tray, okay? So people will search like the term desk tray and then end up buying a keyboard tray. People will search for computer keyboard stand and then end up buying a keyboard tray. People search for stand-up desks, then end up buying a keyboard tray. So you can start to see here that there's a lot of search terms that people use and then end up purchasing a keyboard tray. They might not even necessarily be in the market for a keyboard tray. Instead, they might be just searching for ergonomic office furniture and then realize, wow, I could really use a keyboard tray because that'd be a lot more ergonomic in the way that I work and the way that I spend my days. So these are all the search terms that we found customers use and then end up purchasing this product. Before I walk you through how we're gonna go about using this data that we have here, let me just give you 30 seconds to better explain what we're looking at. So at the top, we see keyboard tray and how many searches this particular term gets, both in exact match and broad match. Let me explain the difference between exact and broad match. With exact, you're taking the phrase you're searching for and it's using that verbatim. With broad match, it's, it's got your keyword term, but it may have some additional words correlating or tied with that. Yeah, good point, Rolando. I forget that some people don't know the difference of that. And if I want to give you an example here where it says keyboard tray, that means that about 7,000 people per month search for that exact keyword phrase. So they search for keyboard tray. There is about 43,000 people though per month who search for bamboo keyboard tray or keyboard long tray or keyboard tray for desk. You see what I'm doing there? With broad match, you can add any other words before, in the middle, or after the keyword phrase. So that's the difference between exact match and broad match. And it's beneficial to know both of those, which I'll explain a little bit more about later. Some are self-explanatory, like dominant category. That's the category that the majority of the listings that fall underneath that keyword fall into. The recommended giveaway will help us when it comes time to launch our product because that helps us know how many units we're going to need to give away in order to rank well for that keyword. And then we see a few different bid columns here. The HSA bid column, that's for headline search ads. So that's a certain type of ad on the Amazon search pages. And we'll be doing a whole episode that just discusses how to do paid search or paid ads on the Amazon platform later on in this particular series. The exact match and broad match PPC bids, again, that's a type of PPC or paid ads that you can use on the Amazon platform. And we'll learn more about that when we do that episode. The ease to rank, that lets you know how easy it is to rank for that particular keyword, okay? So some keywords are very difficult to rank for. There's stiff competition in that particular niche and that makes it difficult to rank. So those will have a low score. So if I see a score like 10, 20, 30, these are very difficult keywords to rank for. Whereas other ones have high scores, 80, 90, or 100. And these would be keywords that are easier for us to rank for. And the relevancy score just means how relevant that keyword is to the seed keyword that you put in. So something like computer stand, our first result here, that's not really that relevant to a keyboard tray. And that's why it has a low relevancy score. Another example, we have keyboard tray under desk. That's very relevant to a keyboard tray and therefore has a high relevancy score. All right, Greg. So now that we have this list of keywords, where do we go from here? Yeah, good question, Rolando. So the first thing I do is I like to search for a few different types of keywords as well as some of my competitors' ASINs. So the first thing I did here is I searched for a keyboard trick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna export this as a CSV and then save it onto my desktop. 
If you're watching a replay of this, you'll actually see in a few weeks that we're gonna have some additional functionality built in here to help you build your listings. But in the meantime, we'll do it kind of the old fashioned way here. So I search for keyboard tray. I'm gonna go ahead and search for one more keyword. Rolando, what do you think is another popular keyword for our product? I would say under desk shelf. Under desk shelf. All right. So I've made that search. I'm gonna go ahead and export that as a CSV as well. The next thing I wanna do is search to see what types of keywords my competitors are ranking for. So I'm just gonna to go to Amazon. I'll just choose a few of my competitors. We'll go ahead and just choose this person. I'm gonna scroll down to the additional information section and grab their ASIN. I'm then gonna paste that ASIN right into Keyword Scout. What Keyword Scout's gonna do is it's gonna show me all of the keywords that this listing ranks on the first five pages for, okay? So this doesn't mean all the keywords that they're indexed for, that's a little bit different because they'd be indexed for words like the or and or other things that aren't relevant. But this is gonna show me which keywords they rank well for, which is much more valuable and much more important. So you can see here, this particular product, this under desk keyboard drawer, they rank for 257 keywords on the first five pages, okay? The reason why this is very valuable and very nice to have is sometimes you guys don't even know what keyword is most popular and most relevant for your particular product. We've been calling this thing a keyboard tray. However, is that what the general public calls this? I don't know for sure. Let's look at Keyword Scout to find out for sure. So we see that for exact match search volumes, Keyboard Tray actually is the most searched, but there are other things too, like Keyboard Shelf, Desk Attachment, and a few other strange words that we probably wouldn't have thought of before. So the benefit of doing your keyword research by searching for multiple keywords that you think are relevant and your competitors' ASINs, which are relevant, is you can combine all those keywords to make one master list of all the different keywords that people are searching for on Amazon. The other really nice thing about Keyword Scout is it's also going to include any misspellings that customers have been searching for, and it will include those in the results as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this one also as a CSV. So after you've done your keyword research and saved your different lists, I like to import all of them into one singular Excel file, or in this example, I'm using Google Sheets because it's free and a little bit easier to work with. So I'm gonna to go to File, Import. I'm gonna select the file that I wanna upload. Click Open. And I'm going to replace this current spreadsheet with it. After that, I wanna do the same thing in a new tab for all the other keywords that I've downloaded. So I'm just gonna repeat that step three times. After importing my different CSV files, I just wanna copy and paste all of them onto one sheet to make it easier to filter and sort on that particular sheet. So to do so, I'm just gonna copy the additional rows into the first sheet. Now that I have all my keywords on one sheet, it's easy for me to filter through them or sort them accordingly. To do so, I'm just gonna select this row real quickly, just go to data, create a filter, and now it's easy for me to sort by, let's say, exact match or broad match or anything else from highest to lowest or vice versa. The reason that I'm doing this is I now am trying to figure out what my most popular keywords are or what keywords I want to include in my title. And in case you don't know, the keywords that are in your title are what gets the highest ranking according to Amazon's algorithm. Yeah, good point, Rolando. We want to use all of our keywords throughout our listing, but our highest search keywords, those are the ones we want to include in our particular title. So what we have to do here is decide which keywords are the most relevant, but also get the most search volume, okay? And let me show you what I mean here. So computer stand is actually what gets the most exact match searches. So out of all of our keywords, this is the keyword that the specific keyword gets searched the most on Amazon. However, is this the most relevant for our product? Uh, it's not really a computer stand. 
a keyboard stands a little bit closer, but I still probably wouldn't consider this a keyboard stand. Um, keyboard trays are fourth most searched. So, you know, it gets 7,000 exact match searches. So I think that's the keyword that I would deem most relevant or most important for our particular product. You have to use a little bit of judgment with this because you have to kind of decide, you know, if something else gets searched more, like, is that more relevant? Is the person who's searching for keyboard stand looking for our product? Um, I don't know. To me, like a keyboard stand is probably something more that like you prop it up on your desk, however they might be searching for that. That being said, we can include quite a few words in our title. So I'm gonna be including all of these most popular keywords. I'm just trying to figure out which one has the best combination of relevancy and search volume. And that's the keyword that I wanna put in the front of my title. Yeah, because imagine someone looking at your listing and the title just doesn't make sense because the first thing that people will see is your image. And then secondarily would be your title. Is that correct, Greg? Yeah, Rolando, I think that's accurate. And probably even more importantly than what the customers think or read is just how we're gonna be ranked in Amazon's algorithm. Hey Greg, I've heard that the brand name needs to be the first keyword that's in the title. Is that, would that be accurate? Is that correct? Yeah, so depending on who you ask or who you talk to, some people are under the belief that the brand should be the first word in your title. I personally don't believe that that's necessarily true or that it's required. So I would rather just put my most relevant keyword that is the highest search volume as the first phrase in my particular title. Of course, if you're looking at very large brands like Nike or whoever else, they're gonna include their brand right at the beginning of the title probably. But for us, people aren't gonna be searching for our brand name. So I'd rather just have my most relevant keywords. So now that we have a decent understanding of how to do the keyword research and a little bit about the philosophy behind keywords and when we want to use them, let's go ahead and jump in and start to create our first listing. Now remember, these keywords, we're gonna be using them both for creating our listing and creating our sponsor products or our PPC on Amazon, but the latter category we're gonna cover in a later episode. We spoke a little bit about it two weeks ago, but I'm gonna go over again of how to create your listing. We spoke about it two weeks ago because it was important to get our FN SKU barcode to put on our packaging, but just in case you missed that episode, I'll just go through it real quickly. So when I'm inside of Amazon Seller Central, I'm just gonna click on inventory and then add a product. After here, you don't really need to search for your product because we know this doesn't exist as a brand new product. So I'm just gonna click create a new product listing. Next, I wanna try to find my category. So we'll search for keyboard tray. And we wanna figure out which subcategory seems the most relevant for our product. So we have things like home office desks or keyboards or more keyboards, drawer slides, computer desks. And then we have computer drawers and platforms. And this is inside of office products, which seems relevant for our particular product. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that subcategory. And now I'm brought to this page inside of Amazon Seller Central. And it's asking for a number of different items inside of my account. The first item that it's asking for is the product ID. And the easiest thing to put here is either the UPC or EAN. Again, I spoke about this a little bit two weeks ago, but there's essentially two different places that you can get UPC codes. One is straight from the source, which is called GS1. And the website to go there is gs1us.org. I'm on this website right now. There's also third parties who sell these for much less expensive. However, as you can see, Amazon shows me a warning right here that the validity of the product ID is checked against the GS1 database, okay? So back in the day, it was very common to purchase UPC codes from third-party sources. However, I think Amazon's really trying to put an end to this now. So we wanna personally play by the rules, so we're gonna get ours straight from GS1. If you choose to use a third party to get your UPC codes, that's perfectly up to you. However, we just wanna make sure you understand kind of the risks of doing so. After you're on this page, the first thing that you wanna do is decide whether or not you have any variations. So if there are different sizes or different colors, those are all variations. And the first thing you'll wanna do is go to the variations tab and select that. 
If you don't have any variation, so you're just selling one product and there's not any other child products associated with it, then you go ahead and enter the information on this page. The reason it's good to go ahead and select variations first is you'll find that the information on the vital info page actually changes. So for us, we have two different colors and we also have two different materials. Our materials are like an MDF type plywood or a bamboo. The MDF plywood is going to be a black color and the bamboo is just going to be a natural color. So I could select either of those. However, a good way to think about it is what's most likely for your customer to search for. For us, it's probably more likely that they'd be searching for black or wood or bamboo versus MDF wood. That's, that wouldn't be a very common search term, I don't think. So I'm going to go ahead and just select color. The next thing to do is just add my color here. So one color is just going to be black. The other one I'm going to call natural bamboo. And I'm going to add these variations. And now when I do this, you'll see that the vital info is different. If you remember before, if you rewind real quickly, you'll see that there were some other fields here, including the GTIN or the UPC. So that actually changes after I enter these variations. Now instead, I'm going to enter the product ID, which is that GTIN value um, on this particular page. Now, in order to get your GTIN, which is just a global name for both UPCs or EANs, I'm going to go into my GS1 data hub. I'm going to go up to product and create. Once I'm here, I'm going to enter my product description. And you can go ahead and include the variation type if you have variations here. Because for each variation you have, they each have to have their own individual GTIN. So I've entered keyboard tray black. I can keep my particular industry as general. If you have imperil or food service, feel free to select that accordingly. Our brand name is Jungle Slider. For packaging level, this is going to be each. And SKU, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that blank. This is a little bit tricky and this always confuses me. I have to go down here and hit save before I can now click auto assign GTIN. And the last thing to do is just select in use instead of draft and click save. Now you'll notice here we have both the GTIN and the GTIN 12, which is the same thing as the UPC. You can use either of these values inside of Amazon Seller Central. And you'll notice that actually the only difference for us here is that the GTIN includes two zeros in front of it. After clicking save, I can now go to manage. And I can find all of the UPCs or GTINs that I created on this particular page. I'm going to go ahead and select them. And for the bamboo, it's going to be this GTIN. For the black one, it is going to be this GTIN. And remember, we can either select GTIN just how they are, or we could delete those first two zeros off the front and select UPC. It is good to fill in the seller SKU in this section because Amazon inside of Seller Central, they use this value in a number of places. And if you don't fill anything in, they just give you an alphanumeric code that's difficult for you to understand what it is. So instead, what I can do is I can do keyboard tray black. And now it's easy for me to know what product that is when I'm shown that um, SKU. I have to select the corresponding color from the color map, just select the closest one that they have possible. We'll be selling these in new condition. It doesn't really matter what we put for price right now. This is always easy to change. We'll just do a hundred bucks. And the part number, this doesn't really matter. You can just make up this number. Let's say 1002 and 1003. Quantity, I'll go ahead and just put one for now. And again, I'm going to change this later. All right, so that's all I need to fill out for the variations. Once I go back to vital info, the three fields that I now see here, the product name, this is going to be the title 
okay? And this is the title that's gonna be used by default. However, I can change the title for each variation. So for our black keyboard tray, I'll change the title to include that term black. And for our bamboo keyboard tray, I'll change that to include that keyword, which is bamboo. I spoke about this a little bit earlier, but you don't need to repeat any keywords. So what I've done is I've gone through our keyboard list and I've tried to include as many keywords possible in the 200 character limit that I have. And I wanna put all of these into our title. So this is what I came up with. Keyboard tray, clamps on our desk, ergonomic drawer slides for computer, mouse, and keyboard. Black adjustable platform stand that pulls out with undermount, great for home or office. Attachable under desk and pull out drawers with keyboard slider. Now, sometimes they let you include 250 characters. I think that's typically for variations. Other times they limit that to 200 if it's for the parent ASIN. I'll just paste in here and see what it says. And it's gonna allow me 250, which is nice. And our brand name is Jungle Slider. And the manufacturer, this doesn't really matter. You can either put Jungle Slider, your brand name for this, or you can put your company name if you'd like. Uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. We'll just do Jungle Creations. All right, now it's telling me that I'm limited to 200 characters, which is fine, so I'm just gonna delete some of these off the back. So at this point, it will allow me to save this listing if I want. However, let's go ahead and fill in a little bit more information. So of course you could skip this, but um, the fulfillment channel here, this pretty much just means whether you wanna use FBM, so fulfillment by merchant or FBA. So FBA is the bottom option. I want Amazon to ship and provide customer service for my items, so that's correct. And for images, if you have images, you can start uploading them. If not, you can upload them at a later date. If you want to fill in additional information at this point, like your bullet points in your description, then you'll have to select advanced view and that's what we'll go ahead and do. So under the description tab where it says product description, this is where you're going to include your description. And if we scroll down on someone else's listing and look at it right here where it says product description, is where we're gonna find this information, okay? So not many customers are gonna read this. However, it's another valuable place for us to add keywords. If we scroll up and look at the bullet points here, this is another area, and this is probably more common for the customers to read this. To add these, you go into the description tab, and it says right here, key product features, and you can add up to five by clicking this little add more button. And I would highly recommend that everyone use all five of these bullet point areas. Again, this is the place where your customers can learn more about your product and where you can include more keywords so you can rank for more keywords on Amazon. All right, Greg, I think it's time that we talk about the bullet points that Amazon gives you. You're given five bullet points to essentially highlight the features and benefits of your product. Uh, we like to focus on the benefits because at the end of the day, that's what converts, that's what sells, um, how it is that it's going to impact the person. Uh, so what we always do is we definitely want to take the remaining keywords that we've been working with, uh, start putting them into these bullet points because this is probably in terms of priority, this is going to, after the title, would definitely be your bullet points. Um, one of the ways that we lead with each bullet point is by putting in, in ca all caps uh, the overall benefit. So if you uh, look on your screen, you'll see that one of our very first bullet points is the fact that there is no drilling involved. I think that that's huge uh, for, for this product, a huge selling point. The fact that people can quickly assemble this and just within seconds have it up and ready for use I think that's gonna be a good selling point. What would you say, Greg? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think that's probably one of the top selling points. And for those of you watching this along right now, I think you need to be thinking about what kind of separates your product from your competitors and what are the main selling points for your particular product. And these are the types of things that you wanna be calling out in your bullet points. Think about the pain points that they are experiencing and what is the solution that you're bringing to the table. Uh, so I think that that's why the first bullet point is the biggest complaint or why the person is turning to this product. 
They want something that they can just quickly attach to their table uh, and, and not require any drilling, any mess, anything like that. And then we could start getting into all what Greg mentioned, what distinguishes us from our competitors. Because now we have, the, in the next bullet points, we, ha we are highlighting those features and those benefits. Cool, so I'll go ahead and paste these bullet points that you created into our listing, Rolando. The last section that we need to talk about is the product description section. Now, the way I like to think about this is this is where I want to include any keywords or any information that I couldn't fit inside of my bullet points. Amazon does allow some basic HTML markup in this section, and don't be overwhelmed by that. It's actually not that complicated. And if you go to simplehtmlguide.com slash cheat sheet, which will include a link in the description below, here you can find basic HTML markup and how to go about doing it. So if we wanted to include something in bold, we would follow the instructions here where we include the little open arrow, B, close arrow, whatever we want to include in bold, and then exactly what it shows you at the end here. So feel free to include this in your product description. It does make it a little bit more legible and easier to read by including this HTML markup inside of your product description. And I'll be going in later at a later time cleaning up this description. Right now we're just trying to put this together for you guys so you can get an idea of the anatomy of a listing. There is one last important section for Amazon sellers to know about and you can find it under the keywords tab. And in here you can see there's a section called search terms, okay? This is one last area where you can include any other keywords that aren't in the product description or product listing itself. This is an area that you can include words like maybe your product in another language like Spanish, um, what Amazon doesn't want you to use these for is exactly what they call out here, like no competitor brand names or ASINs, okay? And as you guys know, we like to follow the Amazon rules because we don't want to put our account health at risk. So I'd encourage you guys not to put those types of things. And since they specifically call this out, I'm pretty sure they're smart enough to automatically filter these types of things out. The search terms field is a good area to include some of your main keywords translated into other languages that your customers might be using. So in the US, the second most common language is Spanish, so we can include some Spanish keywords for our particular listing. Rolando, hook me up with a translation here. Sure, I would say go with bandeja del teclado. All right. Spanish for keyboard tray. Sweet. You could also throw in the word tabla. Tabla means board. So you could say tabla, De teclado. Sounds like a plan. And after this, we've filled out all of the main fields for our particular listing. Keep in mind that you can always edit these at a later date. So feel free to always come back, always be improving these. Don't feel like everything that you want needs to be in here right now. We're just trying to get our listing started here and we're going to iterate on it and improve on it for years and years to come. Last thing I'll do is just click save and finish. <laughs> and there we have it. Our Amazon listing is now created. And once inventory is into Amazon, this will be displayed within the search results. Excellent. Hey, Freedom Builders. What do you think of the new name, Jungle Slider? Drop in the comments below your thoughts. We'd love to know. That wraps up the content for today's episode. Rolando, what are our action items for this week? As always, we want to follow along with what you've been teaching us, Greg. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to do that keyword research. Uh, get those keywords so that you can start placing them in the title, making that title keyword rich. Also, you're going to create those five bullet points that we touched on today, as well as adding those keywords into the, uh, the back end of your Seller Central uh, listing. Have I missed anything else? No, I think that's about it. After doing you guys' action items, make sure to take a picture of yourself and proof that you're working on them. Use the hashtags MDCS challenge and hashtag freedom builders, and you'll be entered into our Amazon seller seat fund where you can win up to $2,500 to help you jumpstart your Amazon business. Thank you guys very much for tuning in today. If you've enjoyed this episode, give us a little thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Thank you, Rolando. It's been fun. I'll see you next week. Take care, Greg. And keep crushing it, Freedom Builders. Oh.